It's interesting to see the movements between the euro dollar and of course various other currencies. It seems the Bank of Japan really surprised uh, the markets today and this is why we're seeing quite a bit of volatility when it comes to currencies. Yes, so the Nikkei was uh, trading down until that announcement by the Bank of Japan. And a, in, and, a, and a cut in interest rates in the Bank of Japan leads to the deposit rate actually being negative, which is quite a surprise. And it just shows you um, the, how under pressure that you had, the Japanese economy is. And they need to get exports going and they need a, a slightly weaker, weaker yen. Um, so very interesting move by the Bank of Japan. And we saw Australia follow suit in, uh, by not increasing their inter interest rates, which also came as a surprise. So really what you're looking at is uh, countries trying to weaken their, uh, their currency so they can get exports and get the economies running again. Well, Rob, it seems that everyone's trying to weaken their currency at this point. We had Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke talking about uh, more asset purchases. That is going to be net positive for the U.S. dollar. We know that the U.S. economy is currently on very uh, shaky ground and there is a lot of talk about quantitative easing as well. What is the Fed's response going to be to the surprise move of the Bank of Japan? I think they'll carry on buying uh, asset-backed uh, securities in the States. They, their housing uh, problems are not over in America and they might need to support um, the housing, housing again and maybe put a, 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 a stimulus into that housing package. So I think um, they'll have to take a look at that. I think that uh, they want a weak, uh, a weak, uh, a weaker dollar against uh, the Chinese currency, uh, and they don't want too, too strong a dollar. So it's uh, interesting to see. I think that there is a possibility of quantitative evening coming from the states. If the employment numbers coming out this week are, uh, are very weak and uh, employment is not improving, so if, uh, if employment is improving, maybe they'll stay where they are. But if there isn't. Quantitative eating and maybe a stimulus package is something that the states will look at again. Well, just looking at this trend that perhaps is going to emerge, negative deposit rates, uh, that's quite a scary scenario that is playing out, Rob. Uh, what does that say about the, the currency situation on the global level? And obviously this is also going to mean that many investors are going to opt for higher yielding currencies such as the RAND. Definitely. I think that the RAND will be under pressure to weaken uh, beyond 730. Um, as uh, you get a negative deposit rate in Japan, so the carry trade will come back. People will start looking for yields. So we see money coming back into our bonds, money coming back into our equities. Um, so the emerging economies around the world are going to battle to have uh, weaker currencies and get their exports running. I think that people have to start to take a look at saying, well, what can we do with a stronger currency in emerging markets? I think that they'll need to buy capacity and they'll have to buy um, industrial and improve their industrial development and, ca and capital. Um, goods, so you know, building uh, factories, building railways, and while they've got these strong currencies, use it to uh, to build and uh, enhance uh, the emerging markets. Well, Rob, time and time again, we keep hearing that perhaps the interest rate environment in South Africa, or inter the interest rates as a tool to try and weaken the local currency, isn't the best strategy strategy to use. Uh, given the fact that the yen has, in fact, weakened in today's session, perhaps uh, the Reserve Bank in South Africa should start uh, thinking about bringing down our interest rates and that would perhaps have uh, a negative effect on the RAND. In other words, we could see a little bit of weakness coming through. Do you think that's a possibility? I do think it's a possibility. Before the Bank of Japan uh, decreased rates today, most uh, econ economists in South Africa were thinking that the rates would stay unchanged. However, if we keep seeing quantitative easing around the world in, in Western economies, uh, the likelihood of us having to follow suit is, is very real. And we might have to cut those interest rates uh, more. I think it's very positive um, for our exports. Uh, it will weaken the RAND slightly uh, and will help with unemployment and the indebtedness of uh, the local consumer in South Africa. Still uh, got very high uh, household income debt. Uh, and a lot of debt and still saving uh, rather than to, uh, starting to spend. So I think it will be positive for us if we do get an interest rate cut. Uh, Rob, taking into consideration that foreigners were sellers of local bonds last week and it seems that they were also offloading some of those equities, do you see that trend changing in October given the fact that September was a very good month for global equities uh, and we also know that earnings season kicks off in uh, the US later on this week. So perhaps that could be quite telling. Yes, earnings uh, start to kick off on Thursday in America and uh, we're going to be looking very closely at those numbers. Have they managed to continue making cash uh, on, on the real side of their earnings and not, and not just from cost cutting? So that will be something that we're going to be looking at. And uh, from our side uh, in, in South Africa, you know, the, the earnings in, in America is... Uh, 
um, showing you whether that consumer in America is starting to spend. And if that consumer in America is starting to spend, it will look very positive. And if uh, unemployment figures that are coming out, non-farm payrolls are very positive, I think that with all the stimulus around the world still there and America turning to the positive, um, it will be very difficult to short this market and there will be a lot of uh, money flowing back into equities. So uh, the earnings season and unemployment figure at the end of this week um, will definitely give direction to where October is going to flow. Uh, do you think we're going to see light volumes ahead of that data that is set to be released later on this week? And also, all the noise that is now starting to come through from Ireland and the European Union, of course, Moody's uh, being relatively concerned about uh, the uh, sovereign crisis that perhaps is playing out or the banking crisis that is playing out in Ireland. Yes, yeah, sovereign debt in, uh, in, in Ireland is a, is a problem. Um, and if they get downgraded, I think it will cause a little bit of a, a bump in the market. But I think uh, generally uh, um, the volumes will be relatively thin until Thursday, until we start to see some of the big uh, components of the Dow and companies in the Dow reporting and uh, non-farm payrolls coming out and jobless claims on Thursday as well. So I think we'll be relatively thin until then and start to get direction at the end of the week and it will give us direction for October, uh, whether it's going to be uh, selling in October and go away as well. We'll have to wait and see.